Hi, my name is Flossy. I'm a bi-hemispherical traveller. Living in British Columbia, Canada, in my home-built van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm back in New Zealand right now, travelling the length of the country in a van. And I'm excited to share with you this magical, subtropical country where I was born. From here, the next steps are to go further south towards Wellington and Wellington is where the ferry is to cross from the North Island to the South Island. Anyway, I'm buzzing. It's great. It's early in the morning. <laughs> We're now a couple of weeks into our road trip down the length of New Zealand, now almost at our halfway point. There's two of us, my sweetheart and I, who only ever really make the occasional mysterious cameo in these videos. We're traveling in a camper van, a high top, a Toyota Hiace that has been fully converted. It's a wonderful to share space, be so familiar with being on the road and just doing it in a whole new country. I've always lived in the city when I lived in New Zealand, so being on the road was a really special experience. It's so good. This one we can make at home though. Rosemary, rosemary coffee and maple. This Toyota Highest high top camper van has a few special features. It does have an overhead second bed, if needed, that we could pull out, but we only really use this area for storage. It's an absolute maze. This place is so building. The fact that it's old and they've kept some of that old flavor is really lovely. There's our ferry. We're going on this big boat out into the harbour, across to the South Island, leaving Wellington behind. It's a couple of beautiful tugboats. I've been on tugboats like that size, but back in Canada. And then some old beautiful buildings and our blue bridge boat. But in the distance, this is the beehive, which is New Zealand's parliamentary building. And it looks like a beehive. Isn't it weird looking? Out into the mountains, Victoria. The dinette converts into a bed at night. The table and a lagoon table adjustable leg, which was super handy for dinner times and when I had to work on video editing. Get it out with a small fridge, a water tank to hold enough water to last us four or five days for drinking and washing up, an electrical system to run a wee fridge, a water pump and lights that gets charged off the alternator. Since we were driving one to two hours almost every day or every second day, it was enough to keep the battery topped up. They have chained in this livestock trailer which speaks to how rock and rolly it can get on this ocean. But we're going to go above deck in the cabins. Second huge travel day. Wow, this was quite a journey. We stopped at Bulls, which is a very funny punny town. Went all the way through Levin, tried to get to Fujo Winery that wasn't open in Levin. And then all the way down here to stop in Wellington. We saw some friends in Wellington and had some delicious food and some gin tasting. And then spent the night there 
before catching a Cook Strait Ferry on the Blue Bridge. Woohoo! The last piece. It feels like we did so many stops for this part of the North Island from there to there to Taupo and then two stops to get to there to there. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, we'll see you in the South Island. The camper van did not have enough battery capacity to run the fridge for more than 48 hours if we were stationary for too long, as we found out. But in several camper vans, we paid for a hookup so we could fully charge up the battery and get it all nicely topped up. We had a small grey water tank which we emptied about once a week and a trusty boom bucket for all those very very rare times when peeing in the bush just wasn't possible or an emergency poop situation just had to happen. I hope to keep coming back to New Zealand every so often to keep in touch with my family and the very dear friends I have here to watch my nibblings and all my cousin's kids grow up from afar. It's just not the same as being here frequently to connect with them as they become tiny wee adults. My heart. I have never wanted kids of my own ever, but I dearly, dearly appreciate all the wee ones I'm related to. I think those ones might be oyster foods. Traveling back into the city has been quite a challenge for me. I'm used to a different kind of energetic buzz now. The noise of only farms, forests and animals. The rushing and tooting and speeding of cars, the hustle and bustle of people and the industrial hum of the city has begun to feel like a roar in my ears. What a change. We got to Wellington and met up with some dear friends and went out to dinner. I didn't film this as I was a little overwhelmed and really wanted to connect with my friends and not bring out a camera in an intimate social situation. I found the biggest challenge of the city to be the attention paid to appearance. My brain can't help but immediately start to compare myself with all the others around me. My body, my clothes, my size, and it just gets louder. For the most part, if I am rested and emotionally resourced, I am able to switch that off and really enjoy people watching, appreciating the beauty, the effort and the pride people display as they exist and move within the city world. I grew up with a mother who incessantly watched her weight to the very gram, ate in a strictly controlled way, different to the rest of us family, and shared with me as a kid her thoughts about her own body. Mum, if you're watching this, I love you, and I thought you were a superhero as a kid. But the effect of this on my little brain wasn't the healthiest. As a young adult, I developed a serious eating disorder, bulimia at its worst, an obsession with my weight, starving myself when my things in my life spiraled out of control. It's been many, many years since that all happened. I've come out, stepped more into who I am, and have had amazing therapy to support my growth into loving myself. But I have a few boundaries in my life to take care of myself. I don't have full length mirrors around me in my life or a set of scales. As in moments of fatigue or depression, these things can so easily send me into an unhealthy spiral. I think of these boundaries as taking deep care of myself in times when I need gentle tenderness. If you remember my van, it has a gold wall, which is now my sticker wall. This is the wall I had originally planned to put a mirror on, but after deeper consideration, I'm so glad to be collecting stickers and putting them on there from all around the world.
What's the relevance of this to our trip, you ask? Well, once you hit the city, there are mirrors everywhere. Challenge one. I was really tired and out of my rhythm and routine from daily changes of location and pace. So my brain was a little more critical of myself all the time. And to top it all off, I had had three or four separate occasions of well-meaning but thoughtless comments from random strangers asking me if I was pregnant. <sighs> Tears immediately. My body is rounder than what it was in my 20s and that's okay. My clothes are looser and more comfortable and I like them this way. I enjoy my style and take pride in the way I look, but stepping back into the city world and having unsolicited feedback or comments on my body was just too much all at once. I'd really hoped to film so much more in Wellington to show you some of the cool and quirky things about the city, but I was really struggling mentally, craving the remote quietness that our South Island adventures that we were about to embark on promised. If you have stories about the relationships you have with your body, your stories of traveling from city to rural areas and how you've noticed the changes in these locations and the energy you experience in these transitions, I'd love to hear from you. I read all of the comments below and hope to catch up on replying to all of them once I get back home to Canada. Having swiftly jaunted through Wellington and leaving with mixed memories, it felt like such a huge breath of fresh air, an energetic slowdown crossing over the Tasman Sea via the big old vehicle ferry. We were now in Picton, in the Marlborough Sounds, the very, very top of the South Island of New Zealand, with our trusty Toyota Hiace camper van heading to a very beautiful secluded camp spot. What a relief. We ended up staying here two nights. It was gorgeous. Only a scattering of other campers right on the ocean with boats, mud flats, and a lot of native birds wandering around grasslands. So happy to be here. Let's put moisturizer on my face because my face has been so dry from sunscreen and the sun. And now, I get to be at the beautiful beach and chill and relax. Today we caught the ferry over from the North Island to the South Island. And it was a pretty long journey, three hours on the boat. Uh, this particular ferry, they give you a little cabin to go hide away in. So I spent three hours doing video editing. Video editing in beautiful places as we went through the sounds was pretty gorgeous and the sun is just going down behind the mountain now and we found this beautiful camp area on a place that reminds me so much of the sounds in the archipelago of British Columbia and I'm just happy tomorrow we go on a big kayaking trip and we have finished half of the island and probably halfway through the trip I think we're just over 14 days, I think. The first half of the trip was a little wet and very family orientated and a little more challenging. And as we settled into our routine and the, the vehicle and the, the speed of travel, because you know, when you start traveling with a destination and with a more 
a little bit of more of a schedule it's like a bit of a different experience so that was fun and now everything is going smoothly and the things we're starting to do are super fun and yeah I feel like I'm opening up to connecting more with what's around me and still absorbing and learning and forgetting how much I have forgotten from when I lived here and meeting some awesome new people seeing some queers on the boat and the beach and it's all just been super lovely and I'm excited to be here and sharing this place that I love so so much with you all Marlborough Sounds are an extensive network of sea-drowned valleys at the northern end of the South Island of New Zealand. The Marlborough Sounds were created by a combination land, subsistence and rising sea levels. All geared up, kayaks ready, time to hit the water! According to Maori mythology, the sounds are the prowls of many sunken waka or canoes of Aoraki. The sounds were extensively travelled and partially inhabited by Maori groups before the coming of colonising white men. Going out to this island and then across to this point and then into the sound. Using the sounds as shelter from bad weather and partaking in the very many rich food sources. Beautiful muscle. Maori were also known to carry their canoes over some stretches of land and portage paths. However, as in most areas of the South Island, the populations of people were smaller than the North Island. The intricate waterways of the Marlborough Sounds are a wonderland for sea kayakers. We were excited to get out in the water. The Marlborough Sounds comprises of 1,500 kilometres of New Zealand's coastline away from the crowds with the beauty and dazzling abundance of wildlife. The water here can display a dazzling display of colours of thousands of shades, ranging from the brightest turquoise to the deepest dark blues. They're so majestic and quite big. They almost look like penguins, but they're not. They've got that penguin tuxedo on. It felt amazing to be in a very secluded bay, having kayaked there to have it all by to ourselves for the day. We stopped, chilled out, took a break from the sun in the shade because it was fiercely hot that day, picnicked, and then jumped into the sparkling turquoise water. We kayaked from way over there, crossed the pass into one of the other fjords, and it's beautiful, there's nobody around. My giggles of delight to find urchins crabs, wee fish, and amazing sea stars that reminded me of the sun stars that inhabit our BC coastal Canadian waters. It felt really empowering to reclaim this space for my body also, letting the water clothe me, feeling the soft touch of her cool temperatures caress and lap at my skin. Giggling, diving, swimming, and laughing. This was the medicine that I needed. Leaving the city anxiety behind again. Re-embracing my confidence in my own body. Stepping back into my home, within myself, tenderly.
doing some kayaking in the Marlborough Sounds which was amazing. You can see that the uh, Cook Strait Ferry comes in through the Sounds there and we spent a night, two nights actually, up around a bay up here which is beautiful and now we're going to do the journey all the way to Nelson to see my auntie and my one of my best friends from my early 20s. We've got some travel up here, some travel over to here somewhere, Greymouth, I don't know where that is, and then eventually down by the springs to Christchurch. It's so much more of the country though that we're not really going to get to. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this journey with me. I think I've really discovered where my heart lays. If you want real-time updates, as we're a few weeks behind real time here, jump over to my Patreon. It's only a couple of bucks and your support means a huge deal to me and has really helped make this journey possible. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. But remember, no one is here to make you. And I'll see you all next week. Bye!